costing up to an astonishing $150 billion. This is an unprecedented home. The ISS is an extraordinary feat of engineering because not only do you have to make this big environment that people can live in, which, you know, is non-trivial to do on Earth, you have to do it in space. It comprises millions of high-tech components. There are 16 pressurized modules with living quarters, sleeping bays, an observation deck, and six science labs, all connected via airtight tunnels. And there's plenty of parking for visitors, including spots reserved for Russian Soyuz capsules, the ISS's lifeboats, which are on permanent standby in case of emergency. Unlike any other structure, the ISS has to provide everything its astronauts need. If it fails, they die. A human being can only survive for three weeks without food, three days without water, and three minutes without air. For humanity to successfully venture well away from Earth, astronauts will need to be self-sufficient. If the ISS can solve the challenges, it will prove humans can truly live in space. But before anyone could take up residence, the engineers behind the ISS had to get it into space. And it weighs a colossal 460 tons, the same as about 300 cars. It would be great if we could just build the International Space Station on the Earth and then just blast it into space. You couldn't just fly the whole thing up there in one one shot. You had to take a piece at a time and assemble it together like Lego. The ISS began life as just two modules that had to be connected in space. One built by America and the other by Russia. The first flight actually launched in November of 1998. It hadn't been that long since the end of communism in Russia, and here we were building a joint Russian-US space station. So just the political milestone that that represented um, was pretty significant. After the intense competition of the space race, it's suddenly all about collaboration. The orbiting Russian module is known as Zarya, which means sunrise. Next. The first American module, known as Unity, sets off inside the cargo bay of Space Shuttle Endeavour. Lift off of the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Unity is now chasing Zarya through space at more than 17,000 miles per hour. Two modules from two superpowers are about to dock. First thing we have to do is to open up the payload bay doors. Can you imagine how important it is for these two modules to, to mate? Unfortunately, before both modules were launched, engineers spotted a problem. Not all the pieces got to be integrated on the ground before they were launched. Neither Zarya nor Unity were originally designed for the ISS. Their docking systems wouldn't fit together. The Russian hatches are all round, and our hatches are all square. I mean, this is fundamental to the International Space Station, and what you have are two things that don't mate. And so, what do you do? Well, you make an adapto Lego block connector thing. The L-shaped Lego thing they came up with is called the Pressurized Mating Adapter, or PMA. Not only does this accommodate the different shaped hatches, it also has a precision-engineered docking ring for grabbing hold of another module and perfectly aligning it. Vital if a reliable airlock is to be made. This is the moment of truth. Latches on the inside of the docking ring finally make the connection and pull the modules together. Houston Endeavour, we have capture of Zarya. 
the International Space Station is born. It was amazing. I mean, here we are. We got airborne. We had unity in the bay. And when we left, we left a functioning space station ready for the next module to come up.